Hi guys, Jordan here, and I've been editing inside of Premiere Pro for pretty much as long as I can remember. But to this day, there's still things that I really wish I knew how to do properly from the very beginning, because it would have saved me so much time and energy. So today, we're taking a look at episode six of five things I really wish I knew when I first started in Premiere Pro. So let's get right into it with number one, change all fonts. So if you've ever had a big project with a lot of different pieces of text, you've probably had a big fear that the client was going to come back at some point and say, hey, I want to change the font. Or maybe you just realized that the font that you chose didn't look nearly as good as you thought. Well, sad to say, the only way to get around this is to go into each piece of text individually one by one and change up the styling if I, oh wait, no, there's an easier way. By going up to graphics, replace font in projects, this shows all of the different instances of fonts used in that project and even the number of times that it's been used. So now when you click on that font, you can direct every instance of that font to change to a new one that you select here. Click OK, and all of those instances will be changed throughout your project to the new font that you want. The longer your project is and the more instances of text that you have, the more time this will save you. Number two, automatic proxy stop. This is not gonna be like every other tutorial because this one happens automatically. You don't actually have to right click and select proxies and create new, no. As soon as you bring anything into your project, Premiere Pro will automatically create proxies for you and it's not even gonna bother you by popping up a window and distracting your work. It'll all happen in the background. How do you do this? Well, let me show you. Go up to file, project settings, and then go down to ingest settings. Click on the ingest checkbox here, and then go down to create proxies. Set up your proxy type. I've really been liking low resolution ProRes personally, but H.264 is a great option if you have limited storage space. Then choose the location you want these stored. For me, this default location is fine. And now, whenever you add any media to your project, your proxies are automatically being generated in Media Encoder. Editing this way, in my opinion, is so much better because you actually can't forget to set up proxies for an individual piece of media. And if you're super lazy like me, it's really frustrating to have to go in and say, oh, which proxies did I set up for which clips? And then right click on metadata and set up proxies and then check that the proxies are all set up properly. And oh, I didn't quite get these ones. Oh, can I make proxies for these ones? Is that possible? Even if you have to add in like a bunch of media midway through your project, that process of adding proxies will happen automatically in the background. So you can keep editing and that process will happen while you're working. Number three, double speed. This one is gonna help you out a lot now that you have your proxy set up properly. If you've got a longer project, you know that really terrible feeling when you've exported a video and you're watching it back and oh, there's an empty dead space and oh, there's an error. Oh, that's so good. I'm so happy about this. It's really frustrating, but it's also frustrating to have to sit through a video that's 20 minutes, 30 minutes long, maybe an hour long, and you start to get tempted to be like, oh, do I need to actually sit and watch through it all? Yes, the answer is yes, if you wanna be able to catch those mistakes. But here's the thing, you actually don't have to sit and watch through at regular speed. By hitting L on your keyboard, you can play your footage, but by hitting it a second time, this'll play it at double speed, which literally cuts down the time you have to sit and watch your stuff by half. And when you're doing this, the audio actually plays through as well, so you can still get a sense for how it sounds. But this isn't just for watching through at the end of your projects. The time it takes to select your clips at the beginning of your editing process is also reduced by this too, because you can still usually tell what's a good or a bad take even when everything's going by twice as fast. So this can actually help you to preview and select your clips literally twice as fast. And if you've got a project that's about an hour in length, now giving it one final run through is literally 30 minutes faster. But if you're really concerned about getting the true feeling of your stuff at double speed, why not only increase the speed a little bit? Yeah, you can actually do that too by hitting shift and then L. You can increase the speed of playback by only 10% more, giving you exactly the amount of speed that feels comfortable for you. Number four, visual crop. This one's a silly little dumb one that's not gonna change your life, but wow, it's a lot easier if you didn't actually know you could do this. So normally adding the crop effect, you can adjust these sliders here to change the amount of cropping that happens on your footage. But by clicking the effect within effect controls, you can see a visual layout of where the crop edges occur and you can click and drag these sides to visually crop your footage. What? Are you kidding me? You could do that the whole time? I'm honestly a little bit embarrassed to say that I didn't know this was a thing until like a month or two ago. So I'm just gonna pretend like this was a new update and a new version of Premiere Pro, which it totally wasn't, but that makes me feel better. So let's move on to number five, remove unused. If you're a disorganized editor like myself, you've probably been editing a project at some point and thought, hey, there's a lot of stuff here in my project panel and I'm not using even close to half of it. 
I wish there was a way to get rid of all the unused. Yeah, you probably guessed it. You can actually do that. By going up to edit, remove unused, Premiere will delete anything that's not being used in any sequences of your project. It won't delete it completely from your computer, just from within your Premiere Pro project. But if you're trying to save space and organize stuff at the end of a project, there's actually a different way to go about this. By going up to File, Project Manager, you can collect and copy all of your files to a new location on your computer or another hard drive. Basically what it lets you do is take everything that's in your Premiere Pro project, all the pieces of media scattered around different places on your computer, and compile everything into one solid folder. So you can easily store it in another location or hand off to another editor. And there's no problems with unlinked media files and all that nonsense. But here as well, you have an option to exclude unused clips from this process. So maybe you're archiving a project or maybe you're handing off to somebody else and you know for a fact that they're not gonna need anything else that's not already on the timeline. Excluding unused is gonna help to reduce the file size and can get you some pretty extreme results in some cases. And guys, that's been another five things I really wish I knew starting out in Premiere Pro. Some of these are really helpful and I hope that you can also benefit from some of my dumb mistakes in the past. So if you guys got any value out of it or if you wanna see more in the future, feel free to give me your suggestions on things that you'd like to see me cover and share it with a fellow video editor friend if you think that maybe they're making some of the same dumb mistakes that I made. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.